here from Rank Country Homestead. God is good all the time. And today I want to show you how to crochet your own uh, handle covers for using with stainless steel pots that don't have that don't have any protective layering on the uh, handle or your cast iron skillets or anything like that. So I have two different types. I have the um, these for the handles specifically for skillets and pots you know the long handle pots and then i have these kinds and you can tell these ones are well have been used a lot for shorter handles or even tops of things like when you're cooking on a wood stove or whatever and everything's getting really hot i've used these a lot this also fits over my uh, teapot handle really well where these fit over slip right over our coffee pot handle so when we're heating the coffee on the wood stove or anything like that these come in handy a lot this one is also very well used so i've got the little loop here and you can see it's pretty getting pretty wore out i've had these for years um because i hang these on little nails right above my fireplace and that's why those look like that but though i do keep some of these in the drawer in my kitchen as well so these ones, this one's never been used. This is a brand new one. And then this one, I don't know if I've ever used this one or not, but you can tell it's pretty new. So what I have here is um, organic cotton. In particular, the brand is, is the Lion brand, Nature's Choice. And I showed this in my tea bag making video. And that is what I'll be using to today and I'll be using this color here now sadly though I will link to this yarn below I do not think if you like this red I do not believe this is available anymore but I did see they had some new colors um, in this that if you like pink they had one that's kind of got pink tones in it I'm not a big pink person but I still thought it was kind of pretty um, I think the pecan which is what this one is, and they still have the olive green uh, so this is a real nice color if you're into greens. And I think they have the spice. This one was called spice. All right, so it's very simple. And what you need to know, if you haven't checked out my other crochet tutorial videos, those are more just teaching you how to get started. And though I'll add this to the same playlist, this is more if you got it, you know, you should already know your basics on how to make a chain, how to make a, and how to do um, single crochet. And those are very simple. So you can go check out my playlist right up here. And you can, the very first two videos, I talk about how to make your chain and how to make your um, single crochet. And in the last video, I talk about how to make a magic circle which is what I'm going to start this off with so I'm using two strands of yarn at a time and it's really important that you get a natural fiber yarn to do this with because if you use an acrylic or something like that it will melt um, this again is organic cotton and I really like this yarn um, but two to three strands at a time is what you're going All to All right, so I'm starting with the magic circle for this. So you can check out that video right here, specifically on the magic circle. So I'm not going to slow this part down. You can go check out that video on how to make the magic circle. And then also check out the video on how to do your single crochet. So working into the magic circle, I'm going to put five single crochets into this okay now that i've got the five what i'm going to do is i'm not going to really start a new roll row i'm just going to work in a spiral so i'm going to go right into the next stitch without doing a chain one or without hooking them together let's see if i can get into it this usually these first ones are the hardest ones to work into then it's pretty easy after that so I'm going to put two stitches in every one. So I should end up with 10 stitches total by the time I get back around. Now you can use a bobby pin or something to mark your rounds. But for something like this, I usually don't bother. I just keep working around. I just want to make sure I have 10 stitches total. So there's four. Working two single crochets into each one. Six.
eight. It is definitely a little bit slower going when you're doing working with two strands at a time. And you might notice I'm using an aluminum crochet hook today. Now, I prefer the bamboo, and I link to these quite often below. I prefer these for most everything else. But when it comes to using two to three strands of yarn at a time, I find the aluminum is best. And I forgot to tell you what size. I'm using a size K hook. Okay, so from here, you're just going to keep working around because you don't want it any wider than that. So I'm not going to do any more increases. I'm just going to keep working around one stitch in each stitch, being careful to get through all thicknesses there until I get this the length I want. And it might be best to count or go ahead and use your bobby pin, which is what I prefer to mark my stitches with as a bobby pin because it's easy to slip on and off, just to make sure you're keeping it even. Because if you skip a stitch or put two and one on accident and you don't realize it, you're gonna, your size is gonna be all wonky, your shape. But basically you just keep working around one stitch in each one until you get it the length you want. So I'm not, I don't have a specific on rows. What I'll do is I use this as a comparison. Now I can look at this and tell you how many rounds I have all together. This is my starting round. This is my increase round. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. There's 14 rounds here, and then this last round is, a, is only a single yarn, and I'll show you that when I get to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and speed this up, continuing on until I've got this the length I want. So now that I've got this as long as I want it, it's about, it's about 14 rows. I just, I find it easier just to compare it to the one I already have, but for if you're banking your first one, you might want to know how many rows that is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snip one of these pieces. Oops, I can't cut anything left-handed. And then with the single yarn, I'm going to go ahead and switch to one of my crochet, my bamboo hooks, and I'm not sure what size this yeah. is, five millimeter. And I'm going to do a reverse crochet. And you don't have to add this, it just kind of adds a nice finishing touch. So I'm just working backwards now into those same stitches. It's a little, it takes a little bit longer to do a reverse crochet because it's a little more awkward, but it just adds a nice touch as a finish to hats and things like that. I usually do the reverse crochet on like my ear flap hats. When I come back around to that last stitch, I'm going to go ahead and stick my hook in there and pull up a loop and just pull under that other loop. Sometimes this organic cotton is a little bit harder to work with, especially when you're doing reverse crochet. Okay, and now I'm going to add my little loop. Usually use, I think, about six, maybe it's eight, eight uh, I think that's right and you can make that however big you want your loop to be I just have little nails that I hang it on um, so I don't need it to be very big and then I'm gonna finish that off and then obviously I'll work in my ends later I'm not gonna do that right now I am gonna go ahead and tie a knot in this I'm a knot person, a lot of people aren't, that's fine. Um, and depending on what it is that I'm making, 
especially like if it's clothing like sweaters and hats I try to be very careful about how the knots end up so I'll work these ends in later you don't have to watch me do that now so you see that just slips real nicely over that I use these all the time I have lots of them and it's obviously some of them are getting pretty wore out just really just the loops like right there I probably should make it do a double yarn for it. in fact I think this one is a double yarn huh interesting and while I'm at it, I'm going to put in, I'm going to use some different colors. I'm going to go ahead and do the olive. I'm going to be making this shorter, wider one is for shorter, wider handles, duh, or tops on pots. And the only real difference is I have fewer rows, but it's wider. So that means I need, um, I need to do more increases um, in the following rounds after the 10. So I'm going to start off the same. I'm going to start with five single crochets into the magic circle. That's three, four, and five. And don't forget to pull your tail to get to tighten up that um, circle so you, there's no gap there. What, what happened here? All right, so now I'm going to be showing you how I make this one, which there's very little difference, that shorter, wider one. They both have their place. I use them both frequently. So I start off with the same, the magic circle, and then working five single crochets into the circle. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Grab your tail and you pull it to close up that circle. Okay, that's why it's called a magic circle because you can't do that very well. If you, that doesn't work when you're using a chain and then making a loop and then, um, yeah, and then working into that. You just can't totally tighten up that center. So now I'm going to do two in each one, so I'll have ten. Okay, now you notice that my hole sort of spread out a little bit. I just pull that tail again. I, every time that happens, just keep pulling on that tail until that hole closes back up again. All right, so now um, since I'm not making the long skinny one, I need to make this wider. My next round is going to be one single crochet and the first single crochet and then two in the next. So I'm increasing this whole thing by another five. So I've got five, 10, and this round will be 15. All right, so I'm gonna jump ahead here. Okay, so now I've got 15. Now I gotta do, I gotta increase one more time. So I'm increasing by five each time. This is how you do amigurumi. And it, it can be, um, depending on what the pattern is, it can be increasing by um, four each, each round. It's, it depends on what, what increments you're working in, if you're working in fours. I always set my patterns up so I'm working in fives because it's just the easiest to keep track of and I just like the number five. So um, anyway, now my next round is going to be one single crochet in the first two stitches and then two in the next. That's four stitches. So that means I'm going to do that four more times. Four times. So it really helps to know your multiples. In fact, it was crocheting, it was doing amigurumi that got me really sharp on my multiples. All right, so now I have 20, three more rounds just of 20 stitches, so no more increases. And then the last round, I'm gonna go ahead and do like I did on this one. I'm gonna keep it doubled up the yarn instead of like I did on this one where I went down to a single, single uh, strand of yarn so that then my loop is doubled. Because looking at some of these other ones, it looks like I did, this was kind of the different one where I just, not all of them I did that way. Now this one I, I went down to a single yarn, 
but that's probably why this is more wore out. So anyway, I will, I'll finish this out with four more rounds or three more rounds. All right, so now I'm going to keep both strands. I'm going to go ahead and do that reverse double or reverse single crochet. So it might be easiest to pull that loop up a little bit bigger to get started. So you're just working backwards and then pull it tight again. And these will loosen up if they seem a little tall or if they seem a little tight at first. Remember, it's cotton, it will stretch some and um and then um it'll yeah <laughs> just keep that in mind because if i compare this to this it's going to look a lot smaller but this is well used and it's very and it's pretty stretched out to my last couple of uh reverse single crochets and i figure since i probably won't do a separate video on how to do the reverse single crochet i'll go ahead and show these last two in slow motion. So you're just taking your hook and working backwards, slipping it through the, the loops there, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two loop, the both loops on the hook, which is actually kind of like four because I've got the yarn doubled up and I'll show it one more time. Okay, whoop. I'm trying to look at the camera and look at this at the same time. Pull up a loop, yarn over there. And then when you go to connect, you're gonna do it the same basic way with a slip stitch. So you're gonna, man, it's tight. It's also much harder to work into that reverse single crochet. It's just, especially using two strands of yarn at a time, it makes it even harder. But, Usually you're not doing that a lot, so it does make a nice finish. You see how that looks? Okay, and so now I'm gonna add my loop. Again, this little loop here at the end is entirely optional. I need it because I like to I like to hang these on the um, on those little nails, but you may not need to do that you might like the ones I keep in the kitchen I really don't I go ahead and put the loops on there because I'm always changing them back and forth but there's really no need for it okay snip that making sure you pull it through so this should be roughly the same size this should be just a little bit smaller and it is just a hair smaller and that's just because it's new and it's going to stretch out and then what I'll, I'll do is I take a smaller, typically a smaller hook than this, and then I'll just work my ends back down through into the center of this thing, which I'll do with the other one too. And anyway, you don't need to see all that. So there you have it. There's a couple, and, and you know, again, these are good for, obviously I'm not gonna use them, this is just what I have handy, for picking up pans on the side. Um, lifting hot lids off um just both of these are very very handy really great sizes to work with and i uh, i think you'll like them so give give it a try again make sure you're using a natural fiber there are the your two different types of pan handle holders or covers and give these a try they're super easy to make and they're very, very handy. I use mine so much, though. I'm glad I had an excuse to make this video because I needed to um, make a couple of more of these since some of mine are wearing out. And uh, again, sticking with your natural fibers, wool or cotton or hemp, something that's not gonna melt. You don't wanna use acrylic. This is just, you're just gonna have a lot, you're gonna do a lot better with this. And you can choose to triple this up. I found, Doubling it has worked just fine for me. The only time it hasn't quite been, it's been rare, but there's been a couple times it hasn't quite been sufficient, and that was when the pan handle got super hot and I had to hold it for a long period of time. 
but that's rare. This is, most of the time, this is sufficient, the double thickness on the yarn. All right, so I hope you like this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care. Bye.